Hello everybody, I'm Olivia and welcome to Pages and Gems. Hello everybody and if you can tell by that giant gap, we are going to be doing a book haul today and then we're going to be talking about a book buying ban coming up in the future because I have so many books sat in front of me. Some are gifted, most of them I've bought myself, um, but with the new Barnes & Noble opening, I went to an indie bookshop and I went back to my parents, there was quite a bit of book buying going on and now I need to restrain myself. So we're going to have one video after this where it's going to be talking through my TBR, redoing my series tracker, making sure everything's all set so I can try and hit some goals before I'm allowed to buy any more books. But I thought I would show you what I've got so far and if I've read them, I'll tell you what I thought of them. If I haven't, obviously you're not going to get a huge synopsis. I think there's probably about 40 books here. Um, I'll total them up at the end and let you know what they are but oh these are also going to be in a random order I have just literally pulled them from my shelves I don't really know which order I'm going to go like I haven't categorized them or anything so we're just going to go through them so first up was an arc which was sent to me by Berkeley and Emma Emma Noise is an author that I've worked with before and I absolutely love her I love her books but this is her first step into contemporary romance so her other way is a YA fantasy series was her first and I got the first book from her after it was published so she gave me the second as an arc and the third as an arc and I loved that trilogy I loved that trilogy um so I'm really excited for Guys Girl and there's also a lot of personal stuff to Emma in this one it does talk about bulimia and anorexia and all sorts so I would definitely check trigger warnings before going into it but I cannot wait to read it I'm actually going to be currently reading it um now with one of my very good friends Emily then I picked up a book for a video, which is Ledge by Stacey McEwen. This video was supposed to be up already, I just haven't had the time to. So this is a fantasy book, I believe it's a polar fantasy, um, and there's like tough times, there's a lot of rationing. I have nothing to go off of on this one, I'm just really excited to read it. So hopefully I'll enjoy this, I'm really excited for the video it's in, so hopefully I can get to that video at some point soon, just life has been crazy. <laughs> then I picked up The Dare and Losers Part 1 from Inkwood Books, which you will see in a long weekly vlog. It went up a couple of weeks ago, um, or last week. It went up last week, but um, I got The Dare and Losers Part 1. The Dare, I did read this weekend. I ended up giving it four stars. It's a very spicy little novella introducing you to the couple that is featured in Losers Part 1 and Part 2. Um, I'm really excited for this now, though. You're following Jessica Martin and Mason Re Manson Reed. So Manson has um previously been bullied by jessica and now he's sort of getting his own revenge on her um and he sort of humiliates her at a party and they go from there um but it is a romance so i'm really intrigued and i believe this is also a reverse harem so that could be interesting as well so when i went back to my parents my mum had left me after the races by elsie silva on the bed as like a little welcome home i'm so happy you're here thing and it was very very sweet so i need to get to this one asap if you didn't know i used to horse ride i loved horse riding so she picked this one out because of the horses on the cover uh, something workplace romance but i believe it's set in a ranch um and so there's gonna be horses in it and i'm very excited about it so this one i need to get to as well soon then one that i bought jordan i'm so blaming you at jordan page reads <laughs> over here on booktube and on bookstagram um, she told me that My Dark Romeo by Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shem was only like $8 and so I thought okay yeah I can go and get that. Love the cover, it's stunning, it's a new release as well. Um, I haven't read Darling Venom Ven yet but like inside formatting. Um, I really need to get Darling Venom. Venom. Why am I having such issues saying that word today? Um, but I do need to read that one and I'm hoping for a really good LJ Shem book out of this, especially since it's co-authored. So I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully I can get to it soon. Um, I believe it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling, just very like dark. Um, but other than that, no nothing. Really excited to read it though. Then in my last book haul, you will have seen me talk about uh, Wild at Heart by T K Tucker and then we picked up Running Wild while uh, at my parents as well. This one is following Marie, not Cara and Jonah. So I'm really looking forward to it. I know there's a novella between Wild at Heart and Running Wild Forever. I think it's called Forever Wild. I need to get my hands on that one still, but I did just want to pick up the full book while it was in stores because these ones are still indie published and I like supporting indie authors where I can, especially when they're in bookstores. So this one came home. Again, another similar one. I'm currently reading Beneath the Stars by Emily McIntyre as well. So I picked up Beneath the Stands by her. It's Sugar Lake book two. 
Um, I am currently like 25% into Sugar Lake book one and it's good. It's pretty good so far. So I'm hoping I'm going to enjoy this one. I know I really like Emily McIntyre's romances. As you can see, I've loved Hooked, Scarred, Wretched and Twisted, which I need to get the US cover of, but I love the new special edition covers with like the city skyline. They're so much better than people covers. I was gifted was Bright Side by Kim Holden. This one, Jordan at Jordan Page Reads still sent me um, as a like rogue, I think it was a random act of kindness, um, but she picked it out for me and I'm very excited because she's the one that's put this on my 12 books by 12 friends this year. And I know it's an emotional, hard hitting romance. So hopefully I really enjoy it. Um, I'm kind of in the mood for messy and emotional romances as you'll see later in this haul. But I am very, very intrigued from this one because a lot of people that don't read romance have been loving it. A lot of people that do read romance have been loving it. So it overall seems to be a book that people are loving regardless of what they read. And I'm very interested to see what that is. The other one is Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. Have I read Archer's Voice yet? No. Did I see this and thought, yes, I have to have it? Absolutely. So this one is following Crystal and Gabriel. They are two very, very broken people who are entering a relationship together. Um, I believe it's both of them have really emotional, heart hitting past and they both don't think they can love again. And this is obviously going to prove that they can. I'm very, very excited for it. Um, I need to read Amir Sheridan soon because now I own two of her books and it's, I haven't read them yet. Archer's voice for some reason is one that keeps I keep putting off. Really hoping I'm going to enjoy this and enjoy Archer's voice, but I really wanted it. It just reminded me of spring and I thought, okay, well, obviously I can get it. Another one that I've picked up is Before Your Strangers, Renee, Renee Car Carlino. So Meg's Book of Streams, Meg, one of my friends, um, ended up putting Swear on This Life on my TBR for 12 Books by 12 Friends. But I also really want to read this one by Renee Carlino. So I thought, okay, I'll grab this one while it's there. It was buy one, get one half off while I was at Barnes & Noble in March. Um, and I'm just really intrigued in it. I've had it on my TBR for years and just never bit the bullet and bought it. So I grabbed it while I was there because every time I read this blurb, I still want to read it. So it's like two NYU students who've separated and then they're meeting up for coffee again. And they're like kind of going over everything that happened. A misconnection and a second chance of love is like the tagline. And I do really enjoy second chance romances, especially when it's like been a while between the two re-meeting and like it's a whole emotional thing and you see the past relationship and then what's going to happen in the future and it's just I love those types of romances. Speaking of Emily McIntyre I picked up Be Still My Beating Heart by oh no Be Still My Heart jeez so then by Emily McIntyre and Savar Miller so this one I'm really excited for for the summer this one has um set in Maine and it's like a murder mystery sort of romance you've got an ex-seal and a detective so I'm very very intrigued to see what happens um I'm just, I'm so curious. And I know I love Emily's writing. I know this goes back to her dark side and it feels perfect for like spring, summertime because you're obviously going to the beach more and there are more sharks around and it's a bit more dangerous. And I'm so ready to read this. So this one is pretty high up on the TBR as well. People in March at my parents, I kind of went a little bit wild because they had these spicy romance bookshelves that were filled with just con like spicy dark romances with indie authors on them. And you never see that in a Barnes and Noble. And so I had to go and like support everyone that I could. And I got very, very excited because I ended up buying all three of H.G. Carlton's books. Have I read a H.G. Carlton book? No. Did I feel the need to have all three? Yes. Because everyone keeps telling me how good um, Haunting and Hunting Adeline are. And then Does It Hurt keeps getting posted everywhere. So I was like, okay, well, obviously I'm probably going to really love these. So I'll grab all the whole set. Um, no regrets. Really love having them on my shelves. So I need to get to them soon. Does It Hurt is another sea-based dark romance. Um, I believe there's a shark involved. Um, I'm following Enzo and Sawyer. It's got a lighthouse in it. That is literally all I know. It gets posted everywhere. There's a shark. I'm not sure what else to say. I'm just very, very intrigued. I need to get to this one ASAP um, because everyone keeps posting about it and I want to be in the know. Wanting and Hunting Adeline are a viral duet right now. Um, you are following Adeline who moves into her Nana's house and then someone keeps watching her and it's kind of like a stalker based romance I think um but he's like trying to protect her from someone else so it's not like a negative way but I'm pretty sure this has heavy stalking in it so I'm very intrigued to see how I feel about that um but I just really want to read these books I really really want to read them I know they're very very dark and I want to test how dark I can go when it comes to romance so this is going to be definitely a tester oh then a couple of pre-orders I did. I did pre-order uh, Last Violent Call by Chloe Gong, which is a set of two novellas. These are so pretty. They are naked hardcovers, but like, look, they're just printed artworks. Oops. Printed artworks. And then the backs I love with like the two little quotes. 
So um, I need to finish our violent ends at some point and need to continue with one of these novellas. I forget which one's first. I think it's a foul thing. And then I can read Foul Lady Fortune. Foul Lady Huntsman comes out this year. And then I need to read this foul murder as well. So hopefully I will really, really enjoy these. Um, they're so pretty and I love having them on my shelf. And I love that it's in a slipcase because with little novellas, I don't want these getting beaten up. And I just think it's so well packaged and I'm really excited about it. What I had was Things We Hide From The Light by Lucy Score. I need to read this now. <laughs> like I adored Things We Never Got Over. Like it just brought me so much happiness. I was running around screaming with it. Like if you saw my recent reads vlog style, You'll see all of my reactions to it in there, but I really loved this first book and I need to read this one next. And you meet Luna at the very end of Things We Never Got Over and I'm so curious about her. So I'm very excited. And then obviously the next book is the one that everyone's been waiting for. So I'm really hoping this couple has done justice and I really enjoy it. And then we move into some fantasy where I picked up One Dark Window, I need to take the tag off um, by Rachel Gillig. This is supposed to be an atmosphere this is supposed to be an atmospheric gothic dark fantasy um and it's supposed to be a fantasy romance i saw riley at riley marie reed pick this up and she read it and like really enraptured me with it and actually a frolic through fiction really enjoyed it as well so hopefully i can start this one soon it doesn't look like it's going to take me too long and it's so floppy sorry there is a bookmark from when i upgraded my barnes and noble membership but literally so floppy and i love the cover and two dark crowns i think or two some twisted crowns comes out towards the end of this year so I do want to read this one before I pick that up. I did another Harley LaRue which is her soul to take by uh obviously I was gifted another Harley LaRue which is her soul to take from Mariana uh who I met through doing Geneva which is this like FaceTime app and I have loved doing that it's made me feel like so connected to everyone and like it's just been lovely to get to know a new bunch of people I'll actually be meeting up with them this summer uh this late this summer early autumn so I'm really excited about that but she gifted me this one. It's one of her favorite dark romances and I'm so excited to read it. Uh, Steph loves read it and absolutely adored the series. Becca at Becca and the Books really enjoyed it as well. So obviously I picked up, put it on my wishes from that recommendation. But I just love like the internal formatting and stuff and oh, I can't wait to read this. This collection has grown quite a bit because I now have Losers, The Dare and Her Sword to Take. So I don't know what it is recently. I've just been collecting dark romance backlists and not reading them yet. One I'm nervous but I picked up this weekend when I went to the Jason Rakulik signing at my Barnes & Noble after it's reopening is Confidence of Wildflowers by Michaela Smel Michaela Smeltzer. I'm a bit nervous for this one because I didn't really enjoy Wild by her but this is one that everyone loves. So it's been, repu it's been republished, it's a smaller version, this is by Paige and Vine um, and it's just, it looks a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be but it's also just a very nicely bound book, like it's that classic paperback feeling and I'm just really enjoying it. Um, it's stunning. So I'm really excited to read it. I know this is an age gap romance and it's a messy romance. So I really do need to get to this one soon. Well, I Know You by Emily Wibberley and Austin Sigmund Broker. I'm so, so excited to have this one now. But in this one, you're following Eliza and Graham who have been married for five years. They're starting to lose the love in their relationship. So they decide to go away for their five year anniversary. They get to a resort, but kind of go separate ways. And Eliza meets one of the other guests. The other guest has already met Graham, but they don't know that they, um, the guest doesn't know that they're married already and so they reconnect at the bar and the guest says oh I should introduce you to so and so I think you'd get on really well um and so they and Eliza and Graham recognize this and change their names and so they end up like fake dating for the week I guess or like restarting their own relationship and I'm so interested to see how this goes because there's not a lot of books where it's like talking about couples that have fallen out of love and I think it's going to be such a unique take on the romance genre then I did cave to another round of hype and when Barnes & Noble reopened in Philadelphia on Wednesday I did pick up If We Had Been, If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. This one is a YA romance that's gone pretty much viral. You're following Autumn and Finn, something's happened to Finn. Autumn's kind of like, well if he'd been with me and I'd been a better friend like or like I dated him I guess, something to do with that. Um, but all I know is that everyone's crying over it. It's an emotional messy romance, it's younger so like YA bordering on new adult and I'm very intrigued to see how I feel about it um I've loved like seeing Pinterest boards of it so hopefully I'll really really enjoy it I don't think it's going to take me long and of course it's floppy then a one that I'd eyed up for ages is a new cozy fantasy to go on my shelves is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett 
This one is following Emily Wilde, who's a Cambridge professor and is starting to explore fairies. She hears of this place and starts to travel there. There's a local there named Wendell who kind of helps to show her around and teach her about the culture. So I'm intrigued to see how this one goes. I know there is a sequel coming out in November of this year, I think, or January of next year, something like that. But I do really want to read this one and I'm really interested. But the Barnes & Noble by my parents. They have a used section and I love the used section. So I picked up Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. That was in there. I only paid $9 for this one. It came out last November. I'm so excited to read this. It's four six year old women who are previous assassins and now someone's on the run trying to kill them. So they are trying to get their own revenge and keep themselves alive. And I'm so interested. I love old people murder mysteries. They're just so funny. So this one, I can't wait to start. Um, I'm in a real thriller murder mystery mood right now. So maybe I'll pick up this one or one of the other ones I've bought recently and start giving it a go. But this one's high up there. One that I've actually bought and read. <laughs> so I bought this one, uh, The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell at Inkwood Books when I was there for that concert. Um, I really, really enjoyed this one. This is a like very short, quick mystery um, following The Golden Spoon, which is supposed to be like the Great Richard Bake Off TV show. Um, and you are basically following these six contestants as they start at this manor. Um, it's very easy to picture the Great Richard Bake Off tent and like where everything would be because you know you've got like that really nice estate behind the tent. So it's very much so based off of that. Um, and you follow these characters as they're going through their bake week experience and what's happening and sort of like there are little things going wrong but why are they going wrong who's causing it there's a lot of tension um so i'd say 75 percent of this is contemporary cozy reading where you're following these characters and falling in love with them and their backstories and then the last 25 percent of it kind of unravels more into a mystery but i read the whole thing a day didn't even stop um i just couldn't i couldn't put it down so actually i was reading and there was bird poop on my book i was really upset um but i was reading in the park and it was like 85 degrees out i was just having a lovely time and jessa has been nothing but lovely when i've spoken to her so i'm really really excited for what she reads next but if you want something cozy and you just want a book that's a great palette cleanser but it's going to keep you entertained definitely go get your hands on this one it's so 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 good Again, continuing on the murder mystery thriller train, um, I have weirdly been getting back into them and I haven't read a thriller in like two years. So, well, I hadn't read a thriller in two years before I picked up Hidden Pictures by Jason Rakulik. This was incredible. So this is a, I'd say this is more of a thriller than it is a mystery, um, but you are following Mallory, who's an ex drug addict or previous drug addict and she has gotten clean, she's 18 months sober, and she's been living in a halfway house doing daycare things, and she loves running, and like this ex-Olympian is her like mentor from uh, Narcotics Anonymous. And so he finds her this job as a nanny over the summer, um, so she can kind of get out of the halfway house, find someone new to live, kind of like re-establish her life now, and she goes. She goes and starts nannying for Teddy, who's this five-year-old little boy, who really loves drawing, but some of his drawings are incredibly creepy. His mum, Caroline, is a psychiatrist and his dad is a web developer. And she moves into this guest cottage, which is at the end of this people's house. Um, and it was just such a good book. It's in Philadelphia, some of it's set in Philly, and then some of it is actually set in um, Springbrook, New Jersey. Now, the real Springbrook is somewhere that I love to go. So when I went to meet Jason, I had a conversation with him I was like, hey, look, like this sounds exactly like this New Jersey suburb that I love to go to all the time. Um, the one that's in my vlogs, the one that's got Inkwood books and everything. And I said, look, is it based on that? And he goes, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And so it was so cool reading that and then knowing I've been to the places that are referenced in Springbrook in here. And I was like, oh my God, like this is so cool. So I really, really enjoyed it. He was an absolute lovely person to speak to he was very generous with his time so thank you jason i doubt you'll ever see it but thank you um i had an absolutely amazing time he like stamped it and did a signed book plate for me so i'm really really excited um but he signed it to me and i've never been to a book signing before and oh it was just so lovely and i wasn't sure if i was going to enjoy this one when i first picked it up but i picked it up based on emily at emily's bookshelf recommendation um and she's like olivia just give it a go i'm sure you'll love it so i picked it up read it and I couldn't put it down, it was so good. So I gave it four and a half stars. Um, the ending was just one thing that I really did, was able to predict. Um, and I haven't read a thriller in a little while. So I don't know if it was just like something that I realized a little too early on, I recommend it. So I asked Jason while I was talking to him, have you read anything that you think is similar to your book or that I would really enjoy based on like, I enjoyed your thriller. And he goes, yeah, you should pick up Stone Cold Fox. 
by Rachel Collar Croft. And so he literally was like right next to me, grabbed a copy and handed it to me. He's like, give this a go. So this is a thriller. Um, it's a perfectly wicked debut thriller about an ambitious woman who after a lifetime of conning alongside her mother wants to leave her dark past behind and marry the heir of one of the country's wealthiest families. So I'm really intrigued to see how this all goes down. Obviously her ex-con life and now she's marrying the richest person in America, like what the heck? Um, I love like the cover too with all the jewels and then like the gun sign, I just, wow. I love the cover of this one too. It's very like mysterious and intriguing and honestly, I just really need to read it and see if I'm gonna enjoy it, but very, very excited to have this one. Then I also picked up Murder Your Employer, uh, Macassar's Guide to Hom yeah, Macassar's Guide to Homicide by Rupert Holmes. So this is a like mystery, a murder, uh, mystery and it literally teaches these people how to commit a murder and um it's very ins it's very very intriguing um i don't really know a lot about the plot other than the cover is stunning i'd read it once before and i got like 45 40 30 percent off or something so i love the map on the inside too i do really need to get to this one asap because it's just been something that i've been thinking about for a while so lastly then not lastly but one of the few books that i picked up while i was at barnes and noble's reopening was the mostly true story of Tara and louise this one i didn't really know a lot about it before i picked it up so i literally saw it thought oh that looks cool picked it up read the inside cover and it's this 84 year old woman or an 86 year old woman named louise who's had a recent fall um, and her daughter's adamant, nope, you now have to have a nanny. And Tana is a 21 year old college dropout who needs somewhere to live. And so Tana takes this job as nanny, being the nanny, nanny to Louise. And they basically have this arrangement just not to speak to each other and keep separate. But then Tana starts to see weird things about Louise's life, like how perfect she keeps her garden and how like she's starting to pop up on the news and the person on the news that's the, on the FBI wanted list looks suspiciously like Louise. So they go on the run and that is it that's all i know i'm really really excited to read this one um hopefully i can get to it soon because again just with the cover and everything it's making me feel summery and springy and hopefully i'll really really enjoy it i don't think it's going to take me long to read either but i'm very very curious about it and it keeps piquing my interest so hopefully i can get to it soon and we are on to the last stack of books which is ridiculous but i picked up the final strife by sarah al Arif arifi yeah, so I'm going to look up the pronunciation of this author's name, but this is The Final Strife by Sarah Al-Farifi. Al -Farifi. Um, but this one is a visionary fantasy trilogy. So there are like three sets of people with different blood classes and there's some sort of rebellion, um, but there's like values as well. It seems very intriguing, but I've heard a lot of really wonderful things about this and the author and the way she talks about the book. Um, I watched like some sort of clip of like a YouTube I think someone went to a book signing and she was like leading the conversation and um, she was talking about her book in conjunction with the other one and her sounded really, really interesting. So I picked it up, especially when it's buy one, get one half off. I picked it up when I picked up One Dark Window because they would work together in the deal. But I am really, really excited to get to this one. I do want to get better at reading fantasy. Um, I always feel a bit dumb and like I'm missing a lot of the plot. So hopefully this one is a good introduction. I, people said it was an easy one to get to read and um start diving into fantasy but hopefully i'll really enjoy it pretty and reckless by chastity farrell this was like four dollars but it's supposed to be the special edition one with all the pretty flowers and now i've got the regular one but i'm gonna read it and see what i think i prob probably will pass it on when i'm done but this is like a childhood friends to lovers i've seen some quotes from it on instagram and really really liked the sound of it so i'm hopefully gonna enjoy it it's spicy it's dark it's short it's quick i'm gonna enjoy it hopefully then one that I picked up on Beth at Book Next recommendation is The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. I've never read a Garth Nix book, but this one is um, a historical fantasy. It's supposed to be really fun and easy to read. It's like a mystery weaved in with a fantasy. You've got left-handed booksellers who are very scientific in what they do. And then you have the right-handed booksellers who are very historical in what they do. And they sort of ex they're sort of experts in a different area. And they're like spies, I think. And they like try and like get one up on each other or something um but i'm hoping i'll really enjoy it i saw it in inkwood and beth had been talking about it recently on her channel and saying it was super underhyped and that if you were trying to get into fantasy you'd really enjoy it so obviously you had to give this one a go 
This is the one that I've had my eye on for absolutely ages. It's a Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. This is the Veronica Speedwell mystery series. Um, I just have heard such amazing things. It's a historical mystery and you're following Veronica who's sort of very good at putting herself first and very good at like standing up to societal norms for women. And she has this like sidekick that they have a very subtle romance going on through these, but these are like classic murder mysteries apparently. Um, and Deanna Rainborn just does a phenomenal job with them. She also wrote The Killers of a Certain Age. So I'm really hoping I'll enjoy this one and collect the rest of the series. Olivia, Olivia Reads a Latte never is quiet about these. Same with Riley and Riley Marie Reed. So having to trust their recommendations and grab this one. Also, I never see that in paperback anywhere. And I saw it, I was like, okay, so it's meant to be, I have to have it. Then we have, I'll save those for last. Yeah, so then we have another thriller. It's the Barnes & Noble pick of the month, which is a Not So Perfect Strangers. Or is it Not So Perfect Strangers? Yeah, Not So Perfect Strangers by L. S. Stratton. So this one is following two domestic violence victims. You have one mom, what's her name? So you have Tasha Jenkins, who has decided she's going to escape her domestically violent husband, her and her son. So she grabs her son, puts him in the back of a car and they drive to DC airport is in trying to get away and they're hiding but as they park at the hotel a woman comes sprinting at her banging on the door saying please help me and there's a very angry guy chasing after her so i think she decides that they're going to team up together and run away together but it turns out they have like very different perceptions of what revenge is and at some point they end up in the dc homicide files so i'm very intrigued to see what happens with this one um Everyone was kind of saying the booksellers were like, oh my god, it's so good, you won't be able to put it down. It's very short and I'm intrigued, especially when it's like two women who are like exacting revenge. I'm really curious to see what happens. Then a really surprising pair for me was Ricochet and Addicted for Now by Christian and Becca Ritchie. Ricochet I picked up at some point in February. I don't know if it was in my last book haul or not, um, but I grabbed this one because I was really intrigued in like continuing the Addicted series to see if I'd enjoy it. And a couple of my friends had said, just give book two a go, um, see if you enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it at book two, I would definitely like give it a point and say, okay, maybe this series isn't for you, but I loved this. I read this so fast. I read it in a day, oh no, a day and a half, like picked up, read a hundred pages, put it down, then read the rest. Um, but really, really enjoyed it. This is following Lily and Lo, um, and they're like friends. So you've got Lily and Lo who are both addicts. Lily's a sex addict and Lo is an alcoholic. And at this point, Lo has gone to rehab and Lily has like started therapy and trying to put her life back together and break her addiction. But you also have the side characters in this, which truly makes this series for me. I really, really loved this one. It was incredible. Um, I can't wait to continue the series. So obviously I had to pick up Addicted for now when I was at Barnes and Noble when it reopened. Um, this is continuing on, so you're still following this one, but Lily and Lo in this one. But people say this is the turning point book, and so if you are still enjoying it after this book, you're gonna love the rest of the series. If you if this takes the turn that you don't like, put this series down now. <laughs> so I'm really hoping I'm gonna love it. Berkeley are re-releasing these, so I'm obviously gonna keep up with the re-releases. The next one comes out in May and then June break August September break December so hopefully I can get through this one before May um and earn like a book to buy because I am going to want to continue the series because the next book is Kiss the Sky and it's Rose and Connor's book and I'm so excited for Rose and Connor's book so I'm really looking forward to reading this one soon then one that I've an author that I've had on my radar for the entire time I've been reading but never picked up one of her books is Beth O'Leary. So I picked up The Flat Share. This just became a movie in the UK and I really want to watch it. But this one is following Tiffany or Tiffy Tiffy? This one's following Tiffy and Leon who share an apartment but they never met each other. So Leon's there in the day and Tiffy's there at night. I think I might have that flipped. Um, but they've never met and they start writing post-it notes to each other and it obviously becomes a romance at some point. But I've heard that this is a very fun contemporary romance. I know this is set in the UK as well, which is obviously going to make me pretty happy. So I'm really looking forward to getting to it. I picked up because I'm a rugby lover um, and everyone's like, Olivia, you have to read this book. It's a rugby romance that everyone's loving, which is the bind it's Binding 13, book one of the Boys of Tom and Anne series. This is an Irish rugby romance and so you're following, I think, Johnny and Shannon. Yeah, Johnny and Shannon. And it's like, he's a rugby player. I believe it's like some sort of high school college romance. I'm hoping it's more college age, but the amount of people that have tabbed this to pieces, it's chunky as well. And it's not like, like it's tiny text. 
so hopefully I will really enjoy it I need to get through it at some point but I know it's going to intimidate me for a little bit um but this is a huge series I think there's like six books now and they're all getting bigger than this one so hopefully I really enjoy it um I just can't wait to read a rugby romance I haven't read one in a while and I really need a good one so hopefully this will be great I do a quick little order from Black World in the UK, which is where I get all of my UK covers um, and also ones that are like the same cover in the US and the UK. I tend to pick up from Black World because it's cheaper. So I picked up two of Ella Mays's books, who is another author like Beth O'Leary that I've known about for ages and just haven't bought. So I got To Love Jason Thorne and Marriage for One. Marriage for One is available in the US, but I don't like the cover. Um, and this one matches her other cartoony covers so I'll obviously grab this one this is following Rose and Jack I know it's like an incredible romance that everyone loves um, but that's about it so I know there's a little bit of grief in here as well so hopefully I'll really enjoy it um, but I'm so excited to own this one and childhood friends to lovers you are following uh, Jason and what's her name Olive oh that's a little close to Olivia but Jason and Olive used to be childhood like best friends Jason is now an actor and Olive is a screenwriter and he is performing in the lead role of her um, latest work. So that should be interesting. But again, I'm just really excited to own this one. I've seen it everywhere and I can't wait to read it. Then since I loved Priest so much, I didn't order the rest of the series yet. I ordered American Queen by Sierra Simone, which is the new Camelot series. I loved the spice in Priest and I really like Sierra Simone's take on religion but everyone says this is incredible too and I should read this before I continue with the Priest series um, just because this one came out first. They're not connected in any way but I've always been recommended to read this one um, but her is serving the President of the United States so we'll see what happens. Um, I'm very interested about this but I didn't like the US cover with just like the silhouette of the girl so I got the one with the flowers that is a UK edition um, and I'm really hoping I enjoy it. This is like a trilogy so it shouldn't take me too long to get through but I'm really in the mood for some more Sierra Simone spicy so we'll grab this and then finally the last book on this haul is Chaser's Blade by Sebastian Castell. this one I have seen since the minute I started reading um again I'm back on booktube but I can never find this one in the US so I finally caved and got it from the UK this is a grim dark fantasy that everyone seems to really enjoy it's adventurous it's a group of guys with the most banter that are on this sort of like killing adventure um yeah and they are getting I think it's something to do with getting back at like royal conspiracy um so I hope you all really enjoy it Jade at JD already reads this is her favorite series ever and every time she talks about it I want to read it um it's not long either so I don't think it'll take me ages to get through I just really want to read it so I finally caved and let myself get this one so that is my ridiculous amount of books that I've recently bought. Are there any of these that you have read and loved or do you think there are any that I should read first? Are there any you want to see in vlogs? Let me know down in the comments below and as always you can find out my immediate thoughts or see what I'm planning on buying. Give me recommendations of things to buy over on my Instagram which is linked in the description box below. But other than that I will let you get back to the rest of your day and I will see you very soon on another bookish adventure. Bye!